With my daughter Courtney, I noticed that there was a lot of hyperactivity. She was a little bit more difficult than what I remember as being normal for a child. One minute she would kind of be okay, and the next minute, for whatever reason, she was just crying or yelling or throwing herself on the floor, and I didn't understand that. I had drank during pregnancy, so I was able to, to learn and find out that that is what is wrong with my daughter, what, what her um, disabilities are. FASD stands for Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorders, and it describes a full range of disorders caused by a woman's drinking during pregnancy. Some of the things that you'll notice from somebody who has the full-blown fetal alcohol syndrome is the part on the upper lip is flat. They have like a little button nose, a pointy chin, and they tend to have a smaller head and the eyes are set differently. On the other end of the spectrum, the symptoms vary anywhere from the ADHD type of symptoms where, you know, they may be restless, they may have some behavior problems. It may look like they're deliberately, you know, forgetting things, but they may have some pretty um, considerable retardation even though they don't have the classic face. When I found out all these things could happen to my baby, I was embarrassed, I was ashamed, I was confused. I wasn't sure what was even wrong with my baby. I didn't want to hear there was anything wrong with my baby. I just, I wanted to stay in denial and I refused to believe that this could happen to me. We are recommending absolutely no alcohol intake during pregnancy or during the period of time with breastfeeding. For some women, very small amounts of alcohol uh, can cause problems with the fetus. Well, when I was little, you know, I kind of felt different you know, because I had to be held back in second grade. You know, and it's like I kind of had, you know, like other kids, it's like their work seemed to be so easy for them. For me, it seemed hard, and it's like I just didn't think like normal kids. I get frustrated because I know what I'm supposed to do, but I do it. I do the wrong thing anyway, so it's very frustrating know, knowing that this is not just a one-day thing, that you're going to have to deal with this for the rest of your life. As these kids get older, they still are dealing with the brain damage that they've been dealt. People may have higher expectations of them than they're able to deliver. They may be expected to you know, someday be independent and, and have a great job and so on. Most likely they'll be in special ed at the very least and they'll be lucky to graduate from high school. They don't understand cause and effect. They don't understand that some of their behaviors lead to very dire consequences. 40% of individuals with FASD are incarcerated. This is very important. There's no other developmental disorder that has this high of a rate of incarceration. So these kids, because of their behavioral and emotional problems, are at very high risk to run into problems in our society. When we're looking at the components of a healthy pregnancy, I would say one of the first is that the pregnancy should be planned. A woman going into a pregnancy should be in the best physical condition and mental condition that she can be. So it's important during the pregnancy that the woman have a supportive environment, that she maintain her prenatal care, that she eat well, and to avoid the use of alcohol. I was embarrassed to ask the doctor or even tell the doctor that I had been drinking during my pregnancy, which 
going back, I wish I would have. I probably would have gotten a lot more educated on it. I don't think that there's anything wrong with my daughter, but she's three. She's not in school. She's up to par on everything so far. Sometimes it doesn't show up right away. It won't show up in your features. It Maybe it won't show up, you know, in their early age, but maybe she, you know, it'll affect her later. You know, something will, will trigger her. Something won't grow, you know, after a certain amount of time. And I, I, I won't know. I don't know. Not now. It's important to diagnose FASD early on because many of the things can be adjusted, particularly early on before the age of five when much of the hardwiring, our neurological hardwiring occurs. These kids need so many more services, you know, on top of all their regular doctor's appointments and immunizations and your common cold and flu and all these other things. They have to be seen for speech and language therapy, for occupational therapy. Some of them may be a little bit delayed and, and may need some um, physical type of therapy. I'm a mother and we worry and we think about what's going to happen, you know, in the future with our children. Are these children going to be with me every day for the rest of my life? If they're ever going to be able to function normally in society or if they're going to be in and out of the juvenile justice system or the, the criminal adult justice system. That's, I think, some of the biggest fears I face. Since I grew up this way, I'm used to the frustrations, but I still am not used to having to deal with my future, what future is going to be like for me. I'm hoping I will be able to uh, deal with my frustration in a way where it doesn't hurt anybody else or you know, I don't hurt myself. It's not you know, like fair that children should be, um, it's, it's, it's just not fair of them that they should have to deal with these disabilities when they don't have to. I don't want to have it, but it's like I just have to you know, like accept my fate, although it's like I really don't want to, but there's like no way I can change it. It's like I just have to accept it, and I just have to say, you know, I'm stuck with this for life. You know, I just have to do do the best I can to um, to, to, um, to just live a full life. FASD does cause permanent brain damage. There is no reversing these effects. You can um, do early intervention and, and give them all these services, but the brain damage is not gonna magically go away. I could be the parent who says, who, who sits in self-pity and feels guilty and doesn't wanna do anything for my daughter because I have to face what I did. Or I can be the parent that I am, which is, is learning everything I can making sure that she gets the things that she needs in order to function normally as she gets older. She needs a little bit more help. And um, I think as a parent that I'm probably the best person to do that right now. If she's got FASD, I'll be there for her. I give her the emotional support and will seek the help. If in case she's affected by any of this, then it'll affect me too and we'll, we'll do it together.